One of the more frustrating parts of building a product is this worry over whether or not what you're building is going to scale. And I, I kind of put that in scare quotes uh, because it's one of these things that, you know, a lot of people talk about, especially beginners. So when beginners start out and they get to that point where they're ready to deploy their application into production, the, the scale question inevitably comes up, which is like, oh no, is this thing going to scale? Am I going to be able to support users? And it's, it's one of those topics where you have a very small minority that actually understands what that means. And then you have this kind of this larger group of people who have like a fuzzy idea of what it means, but then it kind of, it's like playing telephone. Like one person says like, does it scale? It does it scale because of this, does it scale? And then it like just kind of down the line, just kind of disintegrates into meaninglessness. Um, and unfortunately, one of the, the first places that a lot of people kind of finger point is at the the language or the framework built on top of that language as to like where you're going to have problems with scaling. So basically the conversation goes, um, what technology are you using to build your product? Um, and then if the person, you know, doesn't know, they're like, well, well does that scale? Or if the person thinks they know, they'll say, um, that doesn't scale. I've heard that doesn't scale. You're crazy. That doesn't scale. And, and so you get into this position where, especially as a beginner, you're kind of confused. You're like, well, what do I use here? Like it, this, this should be a solved problem. And the reality is that yes, it is a solved problem, but you get a lot of just like hyperbole and just like nonsense information comes up, especially in regard to this topic. And so you got to be careful but the, the kind of the big grand thing to understand is that pretty much any modern technology that you're going to come across, and it doesn't matter if it's JavaScript or PHP or Ruby on Rails, all of these tools can scale effectively. It just comes back to how well you understand that tool and how effectively you can work with it to scale it or to make it scale to match your user base. And so that's what this episode is going to be about. We want to talk about what scale actually is versus what it's not, and then talk about some techniques that you can use or at least keep in mind when you get to this point uh, in respect to how you can make sure that your own application scales and you can support uh, your customer base without having to worry. So the first place to start is in defining what scale actually is. And in the, the simplest sense, scale basically means how many users can your app support at any given time without a hiccup. So let's assume we're building something like Facebook. So what we're trying to ask is, what is the maximum number of simultaneous users? And that, that simultaneous users is how I like to refer to it, but the, the technical term that you'll, you'll hear is concurrent users. But how many simultaneous or concurrent users can my app support while my users are doing things? And again, we're talking about something like Facebook here. So in Facebook, you know, uh, how many users can actually access the site? So if you've ever visited a site that's, that it's kind of gone beyond its, its capacity for users, you'll get like a, sometimes it's a nice 404, sometimes it's, you'll get like in your web browser, it'll say like cannot access website. So how many users can actually access the website without getting an error? Uh, how many users can post an update to their friends? So if I go to the site and I have some, you know, I don't know, I have my, my novella that I want to publish to Facebook, can I actually fill out the, 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 I think it says like what's happening or what's on your mind or something like that. Um, can I fill that out, hit post and actually see my post show up in my feed relatively quickly? Uh, can I comment on a friend's post? Can I send a chat message to a family member? Uh, can I upload photos? Basically, all of that general functionality is what we're trying to focus on actually scaling. We're trying to say, can that functionality be made accessible to the number of users that are currently accessing the application at one time? So if you have, we'll say 20,000 users, if you only have five users accessing the site at any given time on a regular basis, it's like, well, you're fine, you only have to scale to match those five concurrent users versus even if you have 20,000 customers but they, they access it weird intervals, it's like, well, you don't have to worry about it as much. So that's it. Scale essentially means the ability for your application to perform 
as expected by users without any noticeable hiccups in the general experience. So like slow page loads or task failing and things like that. And so if that's the goal, the place we really want to start is in understanding, well, what plays into scale? What are the things that actually affect scale? And ultimately the, the conversation to have is resources or is about resources. So, um, this is probably, I would say, if you, if you have no experience with this, this is the best way to think about this. So let's, uh, let's use the example of a, a birthday party. So you're, you're at your office and it's somebody's birthday and it's cake time. Like somebody brought in a cake and everybody's going to eat cake. And so if we think about it, we have a single sheet cake and say there's 30 people in the office and we have to feed 30 people with that cake. Well, the only way to do that is to cut that cake into 30 slices that are uh, you know, like of the same size. So like basically we have enough cake to feed everybody and your application is very similar to this. So, and, and we, we want to actually tilt the conversation away from your application, meaning the code that makes up your application and focus more on where your application lives in production. So if you, if you've, I, I think I said that earlier, but if you've never heard that word production, what that means is when you've moved your code from your local computer where you're developing it to a server somewhere else. So <clears throat> this is your hosting company. You'll move or the, the word is deploy. So you'll deploy your code to some server that you don't necessarily own. You could own it. That's usually a bad idea. And, and maybe we'll talk about that in a future episode, but um, typically you'll, you'll pay for a service that gives you a server and putting something in production is moving the code from your local computer to that server that you're paying for. So that server is in theory accessible to the entire internet or anybody who wants to use your application. And so that server that you purchase or that you set up has a finite amount of resources. And it has a finite amount of resources in the form of CPU, memory, and bandwidth. So CPU and memory are pretty self-explanatory. So like you have your, your processor in that computer. It can only handle so much thinking. So like just like your brain is kind of like your, your body's CPU, the computer CPU can only think about so much before it gets overwhelmed. Uh, same thing with memory. So how much data can it process actively in memory at one given time? And then bandwidth being the actual transfer of data. So data meaning data going from like your user's computer back to that server or from your server out to a third party tool or application or something like that or somewhere else. So that server has finite resources and ultimately your application, and we'll refer to that as the, like the code that you write, um, the code that you're writing to perform certain tasks will require a certain amount of that CPU and memory and bandwidth that you have available. And so that's, that's a very simplified version of it, but basically your code is going to need so many resources to run. And it depends. So it depends on your application and what it does and how well your code is written, which we'll, we'll talk about later. Uh, but basically you're at the mercy of that server's resources versus how your code is written and what it's doing in order to decide how your application is going to actually scale. So if we think about uh, the example of maybe we have an application where a user can upload a photo and we've, we've picked out a server to host our application that has like one gigabyte of memory. Uh, we'll say it's just got a single CPU with 3.2 gigahertz of processing power and it has access to one gigabyte of bandwidth. And so in order to upload a photo for one user. So again, this is your application's code is efficient uh, enough to use this number of resources when a user is uploading a photo. So we're talking about one user here. So when that one user uploads a photo, we'll say it takes 10 megabytes of memory uh, to do the upload. It takes 1% of whatever the CPU is that's available. And we'll say it takes uh, 10 megabytes of bandwidth to upload it. And so if we have 10 concurrent users, well, let's think about the, the, the result here. So we have 10 users and each one takes 10 megabytes of memory at 1% of the CPU and 10 megabytes of bandwidth. So basically what that maps out to, 
against our server. And again, we have one gigabyte of memory, 3.2 gigahertz of processing power, and one gig of bandwidth. So with 10 users, that means that 10% of our CPU is going to be utilized. We're going to have 100 megabytes of memory being used, and we're going to have 100 megabytes of bandwidth being used. So if we, we think about that versus the resources of our server, that averages out to about 10% of our available resources being used by one user. And so this is a contrived example. This isn't, this isn't real because if one user is taking up 10% of all your resources, there's probably a problem with your code. Um, and again, we'll talk about that in a little bit here because that, that does play a massive part in this, this question of can my application scale. Uh, but basically in that example, what we're seeing is uh, a piece of functionality in the application is going to require a certain percentage of the resources available. And so inev inevitably, that server that you're hosting on is going to max out at some point. So like in this example, we talked about one user takes up, uh, or 10 users takes up 10% of the available resources that we have. So 100 users would take up 100%. And so you're in this situation where you're going to have to start adding servers or changing something about your servers in order to support more users. And so this is where we get into this concept of horizontal versus vertical scaling. So if you've ever looked up this topic before, like what is scaling, you've probably heard these two terms. And they're actually quite simple to understand. I usually get them mixed up, but I'm going to try and get this right here. Uh, so basically, horizontal scaling is when you're just physically adding more servers. So if you've used uh, a service to host your app like Heroku, um, or if you've gotten into the, the Docker container type of stuff where you can, you can scale the number of containers that you're using, basically what you're doing in all of those different situations is you're horizontally scaling your application. So you're literally adding more physical servers or virtual servers. I shouldn't say physical because nowadays it's, you're basically getting access to a set of uh, virtual resources, and, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But basically, you're just adding or multiplying the number of servers. So like with our example where we've got uh, one gig of memory and, and you know one CPU, basically we're just going to create a clone of that same server over and over and over, and that's horizontal scaling. So literally think about horizontally on a desk, you're just putting another computer up on the desk, and then that computer can take on requests from your users. So that's one form of scaling. And then the other is vertical scaling, which is where instead of adding more servers, you're adding more resources to an individual server. So if I have one server that's one gigabyte, uh, what I'll do is instead of adding another server with one gigabyte, I'll just add an extra gigabyte of memory to that one server. So instead of a one gigabyte memory server, I have a two gigabyte memory server. And so you're vertically, so if you think about like stacking pancakes, I'm just like stacking. Well, that's a terrible example. We're not talking about pancakes, we're talking about computers. So literally think about stacking extra uh, like memory sticks on top of the computer or extra uh, CPU cores or CPU access to CPUs. Again, this is kind of an abstract concept and we're not going to talk about that here. But basically think about it as you're just adding more resources to an individual server. And so... It's easy to kind of think that there's a best option between these two, horizontal versus vertical scaling, but in reality, it's, again, it comes down to a lot of different factors. One is your application and what it's doing. So if it's a question of, uh, I don't know, maybe you're building an application that does like mathematical computations or something like that, then you might benefit a little bit more from vertical scaling because the individual computer that the equations are running on or the calculations are running on just needs more resources. It doesn't matter how many computers you have. It literally just like that problem that you're trying to solve just requires a lot of resources in one context or on one server. Versus if it's just a matter of, well, the code is pretty efficient and the application is pretty efficient. You're just serving up pages, we'll say. We're just serving up like, uh, well, we'll use Facebook. So you're just serving up Facebook posts. Then horizontal scaling actually starts to make a little more sense because it, it doesn't take a lot of, resources at the code level to do it. It's just, but you have to support so many users. So you just want to add more and more room or space for those users. It's kind of like knocking down the wall in a building so you can expand the room to, to have more people physically in the space. 
Um, and so that's horizontal versus vertical scaling. Again, it really depends on your application and it depends um, on what you're doing to really decide which one is better. And typically speaking, what you're gonna run into is uh, the middle way. So you have this concept of like, uh, kind of like both sides of that equation are going to factor into what you're doing. So sometimes you might wanna add more servers, sometimes you might wanna add more resources to those servers. But generally it's, it's kind of right down the middle of that. Now, where typically, <laughs> and this is, and I'm cautious here, I'm cautious because this is a sensitive topic with a lot of developers, but typically speaking, where scale is going to come in the most is with your own code. And it's super, super easy, and I did this, I, I think this is like a rite of passage if you're a developer building software. At some point you're gonna be like, this stupid computer won't run my code fast enough. And, cause it, it kinda, it, it's kind of a nice little jab to the ego when you realize like, uh, I kind of wrote some crappy code and it doesn't work as well as it could. So I guess I got to sit here and, and refactor the code or rewrite the code so that it's a little more performant. But generally speaking, like this is the place that you want to start looking. It's, it's not so much the, the infrastructure or hardware that you're using as much as it is something that you're doing at the code level. And where you want to look in terms of like, so if, if we're talking about, well, does our code scale? So if we're gonna try and figure out like, well, where or how do we decide whether or not our code is performant or as performant as it could be? Uh, like, where do we look? And so typically I look at four areas like, or like these are my four starting points. So if somebody asked me like, uh, can you help me make my application more performant? Uh, where would I look? So the first few places that I like to look are how efficiently are you retrieving data from your database? So literally, if I go uh, to an application and it shows me a list of posts like Facebook, how efficiently am I retrieving those posts from the database? And then conversely, uh, how efficiently am I putting data into the database? So am I sending data to the database that I don't need to? Or am I just doing it in a really weird way? Like the structure of my data is more complex than it needs to be. Um, another one is the physical weight of the pages that you're loading up. So if you have this problem of users saying it takes a really long time for this page to load, then typically it's, it's like the, the weight of the page. So like the amount of data that you're sending down when the user initially requests the page. Um, and then the other one in this one, for a lot of simple applications, this doesn't really factor in, but it, it does come up often enough where it's, it's worth mentioning, which is the efficiency of background tasks. So a background task is something like a cron job. And if you've never heard that, that phrase before, cron job, C-R-O-N job, a cron job is something that runs on a recurring basis. So at a specific time. So I can write code in my application that says, every day at 12 p.m. I want you to send out um, a stats email to the sales team. So just tell the sales team, you know, how much did they they earn in the last 24 hours or something like that. So that's something that's a background task that can be made more efficient in terms of the work that it does every single day to generate that report or generate that email. And so in order to figure out, well, okay, so those are those four areas, but what you want to avoid is guessing. So it's really easy to just sit and guess or listen to like, one user get worried about one user. So one user is like, this is really slow for me. And then you get into this guessing game of like, well, why is it slow for them? Or what is it? And really the best way or the easiest way to avoid a lot of that, that guesswork is through doing measuring. So once you go into production and, and I, I, when I mean, when I say production, I mean, you're, you're literally available to the public. So literally anybody can go to your signup page and fill out the form and, and start to access it. Generally, this is when this is important. And, and what I'm getting at is this idea of measurement through different tools that you can use. So typically these are called, the, the phrase that's used is APM or application performance monitoring. That's the, the general service that you're looking for. But typically there's, there's and there's tons of these, um, you can go out and hire a service to basically give you a piece of code that you install in your application. And then that piece of code monitors the performance or efficiency of the application. So it'll tell you, 
how much memory you're using, how much CPU you're using, how much bandwidth you're using. And then some of the really good tools can even tell you like where there are bottlenecks in your code. So if they monitor like the database level, so like the, the request to the database and how long it takes the database to resolve a query or something like that, they can even tell you like, oh, this specific query is kind of slow. You might want to look at it. And so what those tools enable you to do is get direct and immediate insight into what parts of your code are actually slow. Because when you're, when you're, especially when you're by yourself. So I ran into this quite a bit as I was learning how to do this. And typically I've, I've, I've spent most of my time working alone. When I wasn't using tools, I wasted a lot of time refactoring stuff that I thought was the problem, but wasn't actually a problem. It turned out to be something way simpler. Um, like if you've, if you've ever, uh, kind of gone past, past the basics of working with a database, you've heard about indexing your database. So, you know, something like an index is pretty easy to add, but you can sit and refactor your code that's talking to your database, get zero real performance uh, increase from that, but you can add an index, which is typically like one or two lines of code, and you can get this massive uh, performance boost. And so that's where monitoring becomes invaluable. You want to be able to see exactly where there's there's problems in your application and then through that you can start to deduce it's it's not always direct but you can start to kind of figure out like uh okay can like what am i looking for what should i look at in terms of scale um and so that's basically it in terms of scaling your application a lot of it is just going to be doing the work so doing the work in terms of improving your code so making a point to actually go back and refactor code that maybe you didn't write as well or based on the number of users you have, um, it's changed the, the requirements of that code. So what I mean by that is, uh, say the way that you, you wrote a loop inside of your code. That loop was really efficient with five users, but if you ask it to support a thousand users, it completely changes. And so for whatever reason, that chunk of code needs to be yanked out or refactored in favor of something that's a little more efficient when a lot of users are trying to access it. And it comes down to like these little micro details, just like that, like a loop or a database index or uh, any number of things. It's not always clear. And, and that's where I think it's, it's important to focus yourself is not on like, well, does my platform scale or does my, my application framework scale, but literally like, what am I doing in the code that might cause problems? for my application to scale. And so one of the, the last things to think about in all this, or I, I guess you could, you could kind of bump this to the, to the start of your thinking, which is, does my application actually need to scale? And I say that because a lot of people will get into this situation where they, they start panicking early on. And I mean early on, like they haven't even finished the application yet and they're like, well, is this code going to scale? Do, am I writing it the right way? Am I writing it the most efficient way I can? And ultimately, that, that problem or that worry is known as premature optimization. So what you're basically doing is you're, you're worrying about trying to scale something that you don't even know if it's going to need to scale yet. And so one of the first questions you ask yourself is really like, do I need to do this? Do I need to spend the time refactoring this code right now? Do I need to add more servers right now? Because it's really easy to get into this kind of delusional, kind of like delusions of grandeur state of mind where you're like, well, as soon as this goes live, everybody on the internet is going to want to use it. So I have to, I have to start off with 10 servers. I mean, let's be modest. I'm going to, I'm going to use 10. Um, you know, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be realistic here, but I think, I think it's going to take 10 servers. Like you got to cut that stuff out. You got to you got to really just start small. You want to you want to start with the minimum amount of resources to basically get your application to a point where you personally or if you're part of a team like you and your team members can get the application deployed and if you type in a domain name and in the browser and you go and try and access the application, you can get to it, you can click around and it's it's relatively performant. It may not be lightning fast, but it's usable. And then go from there. So it's really easy to convince yourself that you need a bunch of stuff or you have to do a bunch of stuff that you don't really need to do up front. And for the overwhelming majority, uh, the, the reality is going to be that 
your growth is going to be slow. So you might start out with five or 10 users, then 20, then maybe you'll get to 100, maybe to 1,000, but that's going to be over a, a slope. It's not gonna be immediate, unless you like, you're like you like a grand master of marketing and sales and like somehow you know like the, things just worked out in your favor. And typically speaking, if you're in that position, you're already gonna have access to the resources to make sure that you're prepared for whatever that is. So like if you, if you're gonna like go out to the public, like I don't know, you're the front page of the New York Times. This would never happen, so get that out of your head. But uh, if for some reason you, you're, you're on the front page of some major publication or something and you expect a lot of traffic, you're gonna have access to the resources to handle that scale. And then kind of in the same respect, if over time you're scaling up, you, you're, it's pretty predictable. You're gonna be able to see like, oh, you know what? We're adding 100 users per week we should start to think about scaling. So it's not gonna be this thing where you have to panic. And if you do have to panic, well, you know, it's it's one of those things like that's just kind of the cost of doing business. Like you're just gonna be in this position where like, okay, we might have a week where performance sucks, but we can we can focus in on whatever that problem is and, and then solve it at that time. So basically the the punchline here is worry about it being a problem when it's actually a problem or right before it's actually about to be a problem. And so that's it. I mean, that, that is scaling at a high level. You know, it's, it's easy to conflate it into this big thing, but it really isn't. Scaling is quite simple. It's literally, how do we make our application support as many users as possible? And I guess we, sh we should extend that to say, how many users as possible, but also how can we make it scale with demand? So if you have a lot of users signing up, how can we scale the application to meet that demand? But other than that, that's it. Really, it, it comes down to doing the work and, again, monitoring and figuring out, like, well, where are there bottlenecks in this or where is this thing failing or where might we need more resources in terms of the, the actual infrastructure that we're using? So do we, need, do we actually need a server with more memory or do we need more servers or what do we need? But it's a process and it's not this thing that is magically going to be solved by your framework or... Um, where you host your application or something like that. You'll see that a lot in marketing. Now, like <laughs> a lot of hosts will say like, this is a tool that scales. And they know damn well <laughs> that that's, that's mostly a lie. So like it might scale easy, easily. So I can very, like I can click a button to horizontally scale. I can click a button to vertically scale the application. But in terms of true scaling to where you're actually going to support lots and lots of users, that's going to come down to more than just the infrastructure. It's going to come down to the code. It's going to come down to uh, the number of users that you have and the functionality that exists in your application and, and all of those things kind of coming together um, in one kind of perfect storm. So I think that's going to do it uh, for this week's episode. Um, I hope that was helpful because I, I meet a lot of people, especially uh, folks that I mentor at Clever Beagle. They, they, they come to me and that's one of the early questions I always get is like, is this going to scale? What do I do? Is this going to scale? And you just kind of have to work through it and not really worry so much. So um, hopefully if you're, if you're in that position or you, you were in that position before listening to this, um, now you're not there you're, or you're at least a little more informed and you're like, oh, okay, I see what I have to do. I see where I need to take this. So uh, that's going to do it for this episode, folks. Uh, as always, thank you for listening and we will see you next week.